Hello and welcome to the show. I am back at Imola for some more wet weather driving. We start today with the Audi R18. Now, since I last did this, uh, did, well, since I did the first video uh, in this series, I think there has been a tweak to the, the physics when it comes to driving in the rain because the cars feel a lot easier to drive. I had a go with the Lotus and the Aston Martin again. Uh, I didn't have time to completely redo everything, but uh, the, the cars are, are quicker. So the times from the first episode are kind of a little bit null. <laughs> now, because, yeah, the cars have got uh, a little bit more grip. It's only a little bit, though. It's still mighty, mighty scary uh, around this track. And the Audi R18, I mean, we know how quick this car is. The, the Audis have dominated Le Mans uh, of, of late. And yeah, these are, well, this is probably the second sort of fastest road car, circuit car, you can get behind a Formula One car. We know that, uh, yeah, the, these Le Mans cars are mighty, mighty fast when it comes to, uh, to going around a track, but I wasn't sure quite how they were going to fare. Uh, when it gets really, really wet. And admittedly, they do race these. They, they probably cancel Formula 1 races far quicker, or, or stop them because of rain far quicker than they do with uh, with these sorts of cars. So I was expecting this to handle the rain. You know, it's not too bad. Uh, well, I wasn't expecting it to be too terrible. It's not... It's, 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 it's not terrible. It's not completely easy. I will, I will be honest, even though this car is... It is a nice vehicle to drive, and even though we do have a little bit more grip to play with. Uh, than we did last time I, I tried on this game. The, of course, you've still got to be very, very careful. It's still got a lot of power, 612 horsepower in this Audi. That's a lot of power going through the rear wheels. You've got to be careful at trying to put the power down out of the slow corners. You've got to be careful on the brakes. The brakes are the biggest problem uh, with this, a, a lot more so than, than cornering grip uh, and power delivery in a lot of cases. It's getting the vehicle slowed down without locking the wheels up. That is the big challenge uh, with all the hills and crests and bumps to worry about here. This corner, th this crest is another problem causer. Uh, <laughs> I've had many, a, many, a, many an issue uh, running. On uh, that case there, I, I just ran a little bit wide on the extra of the corner. I was across the kerbs and I mean, you saw it just sort of fling the car sideways. I'm not going to catch it. You can't afford to run wide there. You can't do it. You run wide, you're going to end up in, you're going to end up in trouble. If, even if you don't run wide, putting the power down sort of over that crest of the hill, that's another place where you can get in trouble. I think I spun, an Aston Mar I spun the Aston Martin last time uh, up that hill. Uh, yeah, any car, you've got to be careful uh, going over the crest of the hill there because you're asking an awful lot of the tyres. This is it's sort of an acceleration zone from low gears uh, to do with... And then there's, of course, all the standing water. You've got the crest to deal with. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's you're asking a lot uh, of the cars. And of course, the braking zone into turn one. This is kind of critical uh, with the cars. The Audi was very good on the brakes. The Audi was lovely uh, under under braking. Uh, you, I think it was about the uh, the 200 meter board ish. We were jumping on the brakes. I mean, we're doing 170, 180 always miles an hour down the start finish straight in this car. It's a quick car. It's uh, <laughs> it's a very quick car. It looks so slow through these corners. It doesn't feel it. it I'm I'm pushing these cars as much as I can. It does look quite slow. At trying to get the power down out of these out of these turns again. It's, it's earlier on the brakes than certainly a lot earlier on the brakes than you would be in the dry, and you're never going to carry the corner speed. But the Audi is nice. The Audi is as easy as a car can be to drive in the wet. Really, it's uh, yeah. It's, it was a nice, consistent car, and only a few times a day I get myself into trouble. And it was normally well, it was either running over a curb or me locking the brakes up into turn one. Basically, that was uh, where I got myself into trouble. Uh, with the uh, with the Audi, and I thought it'd be interesting to compare the Audi to a, a more classic uh, prototype of race car, the Mercedes Sauber C9, a vehicle that I very much like. I do like them. I'm not sure if I like the Mercedes or the Mazda 787B. I'm not sure which one I like more. I would love to see the 787B in project cars. Just the noise. The noise would be fantastic. Now, now I want the Mazda. Uh, <laughs> I don't have the Mazda to play with, so the Mercedes is going to have to do. Uh, yeah, I, I like this car. Fantastic vehicle, this one. Uh, I was looking at the, I was looking up on Wikipedia about the Mercedes and the Audi, uh, and they've got remarkably similar records when it comes to races. The Mercedes entered 21 races as 113. The Audi R18, I know there are quite a few different versions of the R18, so I'm not quite sure how that all works, uh, entered 23 and 113. 
remarkably similar between these uh, these two cars, both of one Le Mans. Uh, yeah, in fact, I think the Mercedes is the second fastest car ever at Le Mans. It's, I, I was reading 248 miles an hour before they put the chicanes in down the straight. And that's certain uh, one of the reasons they put the chicanes in down the straight, because the cars were doing silly, silly speeds. Yeah, this Mercedes is a ludicrously fast car. Certainly in a straight line and around a track, there is uh, there is plenty of grip. I didn't know whether it was going to have as much grip, though, as the Audi. I mean, the, the fear with driving this car is, what, it's over 20 years older than the Audi. It's not going to have the same level of sophistication, the same level uh, of, of brakes, perhaps, suspension. So, yes, it's a, it's a race car. It's the top of the, top of the, the race car field, if you like, of its time. But uh, technology will have moved on quite a lot. Uh, since then, so my fear was that this was going to be harder to drive than the Audi. It's got more power than the Audi as well. It's the most powerful thing I've driven uh, around here so far. 737 horsepower in the Merc. That's a lot of power uh, through the through the rear wheels in a car that I was fearing may be a little bit of a monster to uh, to drive. But I needn't have worried because the Mercedes was as nice to drive as the Audi. It, it really was. It was a very pleasant again it's as pleasant as it can be uh, in the rain pretty much i mean we're again carrying huge speed down the start finish straight we're braking for turn one around the same point uh, as we are in the audi and it gets stopped and it gets around the corners the side may have gone a little bit across the curve if you go get a sort of a wheel on these curves it's not uh, it's not a pleasant experience it likes to kind of drag the cars around it's yeah it's a little bit scary around here at the best of times but this car carries good it carries good quarter speed it carries uh, speed through the quarters the same way that the audi does i wasn't necessarily expecting that. i mean i was hoping it would i want the mercedes to do well uh, because i like it but uh, yeah it it was just as good through the corners uh, as the audi was the braking i think certainly for this series the braking is going to be where the time is made and lost almost if you get things wrong with the braking that's where you're going to have a really really big off I didn't have many problems with uh, with locking the brakes up in the Mercedes. I could brake very, very late with this car, and everything just worked. Everything just worked with the with the Mercedes how how I wanted it to. Yeah, it was it was remarkably easy to drive. I did have some issues um, uh, uh, coming up. Uh, I think it was at this. There we go. Trying to put the power down coming up the hill. <laughs> I, I was just trying to be a bit too greedy. I tried to get on the throttle too soon and kicked the back end of the car out. You've still got to be careful. It's still, it's still very, very wet. I mean, look at the standing water you've got around. Uh, I was trying to, I was trying to be brave. But uh, you have the confidence in the Mercedes to try and be braver and braver each lap. That's the amount of grip that uh, that you get from the car. I was, I was impressed. I was really impressed from the uh, or by the Merc. It drove, it drove very, very well. Also, ignore the fact that the cars haven't got the headlights on and stuff. It, I did have them on. It's just in the replay. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't showing up. Same, I think it was the same as it was doing last week as well. And our final vehicle for today, yes, it is to a road car, and in my opinion, at least, one of the greatest sort of technical achievements for a road car. The the, uh, the McLaren F1, sort of nothing came near the F1 for like 10 years or so, is a fantastic vehicle. I think it's still, to this day, the fastest naturally aspirated car. It's a, it's a really fantastic piece of, of technical engineering. However, I've never actually enjoyed driving one of these in a game particularly I, I guess probably the game i played the most that has the f1 in would be forza i've never really enjoyed driving it uh, in forza i'm sure i've played it in plenty of other games but uh, yeah i've never really enjoyed driving the f1 it's always been a little bit of a, a, bit of a difficult car to drive it often has so much acceleration so much straight line speed and not quite as nice a brakes as i want from it kind of a similar problem you get with a veyron admittedly you're a bit better off in the f1 because it weighs a hell of a lot less but uh, i've always struggled uh, for, for whatever reason never really liked driving this car in uh, in other games and this was another one that i was thinking this could be a fight this could be a real fight trying to get the uh, the McLaren around here. It could be very uncooperative because we're going to have such fantastic acceleration provided we can put the power down. And again, this is another very powerful car. 627 horsepower going through the rear wheels of, uh, of this vehicle, getting things a little bit sideways through that corner. It's not what you want to be doing uh, in the wet. Uh, yeah, you could have such good acceleration. And I was worried about, about the braking because we're going to be going at the same sort of speeds as the Le Mans cars were. And we've not got Le Mans car brakes. And with 500 pounds heavier than the uh, than the two Le Mans cars, so yeah, that was my fear with this vehicle. Again, I was completely and utterly wrong. I didn't need them to worry because this car was lovely to drive. Completely not not what I expected 
uh, from this at all. It was really very, very good to drive around here. Often you can you can tell you're driving a road car or you're driving a car with slick tyres on this game. It's kind of noticeable uh, with the uh, with the level of grips. The road cars tend to be not quite as nice to drive on here, uh, in all honesty. However, with all of the rain, I get there, all the cars are going to be running uh, wet weather tyres. The McLaren was really nice. It had loads and loads of grip through the corners, all things considered, and the brakes held their own. As I said, this thing is going as quick as the Le Mans cars. It was 160, 170 miles an hour down this start-finish straight. That's fast. That, that's, serious. that's quicker than the Formula 1 car we had last time. That's a lot of speed down this uh, start-finish straight. Yes, you have to brake earlier. There is no doubt about it. You have to brake earlier with the, uh, the McLaren. But it's not miles earlier. It's not sort of, yeah, two or three hundred metres earlier, like I was kind of expecting from this car, um, dealing with the rain and so on. It's not that much earlier than, it's only about, a, so I think it was about sort of the 200, sort of just after the 300 metre board, uh, we were getting on the brakes for this. It wasn't that much later than the, uh, the full-on Le Mans cars. Yeah, it drove really nicely. And putting the power down out of the corners wasn't an issue either. That was another thing I was expecting, maybe. I mean, we're not going to have the same sort of level of aerodynamics, uh, aerodynamical parts on this car. It hasn't got a huge, great big wing on the back. It hasn't got a huge splitter diffuser on the front. Well, it hasn't got a huge splitter on the front. It hasn't got a huge diffuser on the rear. And yet it's still holding its own against, uh, against the sort of the likes of the, the, the Audi, the you know, Audi Le Mans car that's won pretty much everything there is to win in, uh, in, in sort of prototype cars. And this wasn't much harder to drive. It didn't have the same braking force, no, it, I had to brake earlier uh, with this car, but it really wasn't that much more difficult to drive, which, yeah, I was uh, I was quite pleased with, uh, in all honesty. The, the one scary corner, the corner that's coming up, uh, is, is definitely the hardest corner with the McLaren. It, it was one of these that I could take the corner flat out, but if I took the corner flat out, I was, wasn't going to stop for the next corner. So you had to kind of balance it uh, between, and this time I got, it, I got it a bit wrong, going sideways around the corner. You've got to balance it between, uh, you, want to, you want to lift and sort of start braking, but you don't want to do it too early, otherwise you're going to sort of start lifting and braking mid-corner and uh, corner and wet and you're going to have a big accident. So yeah, it was a terrifying corner. In the two Le Mans cars, it was flat out through the corner and then brake. In this, it was a little bit more dicey. But um, yeah, I got around the track with the McLaren. Again, didn't have too many issues with this car. A couple of times locked up and went off at turn one. But uh, yeah, didn't do, uh, didn't do too badly. On to the times, and it is the Sauber C9 that goes fastest. A 152.219, a quick lap time from the Mercedes, not too far off for the Audi R18, but uh, that's not quite the result that I expected. I was I was thinking the Audi was going to go was going to go the quicker of the two, but uh, apparently not. But certainly most impressive of all is the McLaren F1. A 2 minute 1.6. Yes, it is slower, but it's only 7 seconds off one of the most successful sort of prototype race cars there is. It's only 7 seconds off around a pretty long track. That's damn fast. That, that's really very, very quick uh, from the McLaren. I think it just deals with the rain better. It deals with the rain better than the two other cars. Yes, on a dry track, I'm sure the Sauber and the Audi would go a hell of a lot quicker, sort of in comparison with the McLaren. But around Imola, when it's raining, the McLaren really does hold its own. And that's, yeah, that's not very far off uh, them two cars. As you can see, the the times from the other vehicles, I think, are a little bit useless now. Uh, the McLaren F1 going quicker than the, the Lotus Formula 1 car uh, by three seconds and it's so much faster than the other stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking we, then times will have to be redone. So, uh, yeah, ignore them times. They're kind of not relevant anymore. We have new target times of a Mercedes Sauber C9 that, uh, that leads the way. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.